Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Okay. I would like to uh, welcome you to the Joint uh, Academia Argentina and then the PDT SID event on Academia for uh, SDGs. In a converse the ICT ecosystem today, as you heard a lot from the all these last couple of days, from telecommunications, health, finance, education to agriculture, academic wealth of uh, the knowledge and the scientific uh, expertise through innovative partnerships has been when well recognized at the ITU at large. As a result, we, ITU, have a growing number of academia and the research institutes. So we have now some 150 academia members today. In order to meet and serve better the needs of academia members, various collaborative platforms and then products have been implemented such as ITU Academy, including over 30 centers of excellences around the world today, and then projects engaged with academia members, and the study on ICT-centric economic growth, innovation, and the job creation, which has been launched yesterday. This side event is one of many other products and services for academia members. So two main objectives of this uh, event are, first, to advocate and encourage more ITU academia membership through sharing experiences of uh, Argentina and uh, Iran, and to share the case studies and innovative initiatives from academic communities for meaning the distinguished panels today. So before inviting speakers and the distinguished panels uh, the first, and then let me invite Mr. Torigoye, who will actually convey a message on behalf of a PDT director. So Mr. Torigoye, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Kim. Uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished delegates, uh, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of uh, Mr. Sanu, Director of Telecommunication Development Bureau, I'm very, uh, it's my very pleasure to open this side event, Academia for SDGs, uh, jointly organized by the uh, government of Argentina and ITU. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, express my uh, sincere uh, thanks to the government of Argentina for hosting uh, World Telecommunication Development Conference 17 in a such a beautiful city of Buenos Aires. And also uh, Argentina's commitment as a key ITU partner in fostering the involvement of over 20 national academic institutions. Um, allow me to introduce uh, Mr. Hector Huichi, uh, Secretary of ICT, the Ministry of uh, modernization, Argentina. It's a great honor uh, to have you uh, with us today. Uh, within the diversity of uh, stakeholders in a converged ICT ecosystem, as uh, uh, Mrs. King mentions, uh, not only telecommunications, we have a range of uh, uh, collaboration on health with uh, WHO, finance with the uh, private sector, education with UNESCO, agri agriculture with uh, FAO and others. Uh, there's growing recognition of the importance of bringing academic wealth of knowledge and technical expertise into the work of ITU through innovative partnership. Oh, as a specialized agency of uh, United Nations, uh, ITU, ITU is very unique. Our membership is based on a uh, treaty uh, member states. Uh, we open a membership for private sector uh, some time back. It is called sector members. And the unique position is we open members for academia. That is a very unique position. So <coughs> I wish to highlight uh, academia fosters 
innovative and sustainable solutions by providing a space where talent, research, and technology come together to solve the world's most pressing challenges. Academia is an important enabler of sustainable development. I am pleased to say that many academia and research institutions work with ITU, and we now count around uh, 150 ITU academia members. And Argentina is one of the most uh, significant uh, participants. We have developed various collaborative platforms and products such as ITU Academy and joint research publication on ICT-centric economic growth, innovation, and job creation, just mentioned uh, by uh, Mrs. Kim, which was launched yesterday. So I encourage uh, everyone here today to get inspired and seek new ways to strengthen collaboration for sustainable growth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Torigoe. Uh, now I am very pleased, or uh, even uh, very honored, to invite Mr. Hector Hoshi, and the Secretary of the ICT of the Ministry of Modernization from Argentina, for his uh, keynote uh, address. Mr. Please. Thank you very much, Deputy Director, members of this panel, and public from the audience. Uh, good afternoon. It's a pleasure for our government to host and organize with the ITU this uh, side event. As I mentioned yesterday during the high policy statement, one of the main projects of Argentina inside the ITU was to promote the inclusion of the academic, the incorporation of the academic as a member of the union. And we will refer to this a little bit later. Uh, um, <clears throat> just uh, one thing I want to say before uh, going to my presentation is that uh, my apologies to the members of the panel because due to the reason of my duties, I will have to leave probably before the end of the panel, sometime before, so my apologies in advance to all of them. Um, then uh, there are several priorities uh, among the SDGs for the Argentine governments that uh, could be considered directly linked with the academia. I will mention some of them. Uh, foster research and development. Uh, the Argentine government aims to duplicate public and private investment in research and development over the next years to increase companies' productivity and promote quality job creation, foster research in collaboration with specialized organizations, university, and private sector. Higher and university education encourage professional education articulated with other higher education mo modalities. Federal network of sustainable cities. We need a change of paradigm in the local management of Argentine cities and municipalities to incorporate sustainability concept in their government planning. In this respect, we are working on different action lines, waste management, biodiversity, public spaces, energy, water, and environmental education. Gender policies. Implement policies that ensure women's participation, equal leadership opportunities, and decision making in public life. Environmental care. Implement tax for the prevention and attention of environmental catastrophes, federal plan for environmental monitoring and control, the creation of a federal agency for waste management and industrial reconversion and universal waste generation programs, and plan for the development of the ICT sector. The, the, Argen the Argentine project regarding the incorporation of the academia to these activities, and that led us also to uh, incorporate the academia to the ITU, is that uh, we understood that one way to comply with the SDGs goals is by integrating precisely the academia. In that sense, uh, Resolution 169 of the year 2010 approved the admission of the academia, universities, and their associated research institutes to participate in the work of the three sectors of the union. Um, the 
Secretary of ICT uh, encourage the participation of universities and national research institutions in order to promote human capacity building with a high level of expertise in information and telecommunications technology. This project uh, will be continued during the, uh, during the next uh, two years, that is to say 2018 and 2019. Uh, the goal for Argentina is to produce skilled professionals in the fields of ICT, build human capacity with a high level of expertise in ICT, provide academic to support the task of the secretary for ICT, and stimulate employment continuity of the experts from the national, state, and research institutions. This will allow the academia and research institutions to participate in the development of global standards and to be in touch with the discussion of those standards, establish a relationship with regulators, the industry all around the world, and exchange opinions, knowledge, and experience with multiple stakeholders. And then I would like to refer to some of the results obtained during the past years through this uh, participation of the academia in the ITU. 24 national uh, universities of Argentina enroll in the ITU. Uh, 35 schools of those universities participated uh, actively in the research and different investigations, careers of telecommunications, engineering, informatics, systems, and medicine. 140 professors and researchers, researchers participated in the, work, in the works of different study groups, evaluating documents through remote participations and meetings in person. 29 professionals participated in study groups in face-to-face -face meetings in Geneva, UK, Canada, and New Zealand. And a special mention was received at the Kaleidoscope 2015 by the Aeronautical University Institute for their project Vulnerability of Radar Protocol and Proposed Mitigation. And a special mention was also received by young authors by the uh, regional uh, faculty of the uh, Technological National University for their project Smart Doorbell an ICT solution to enhance the inclusion of disabled people. Five professionals participated in the 2015 World Radio Communications Conference. The National University of La Plata was selected as an ITU center of excellence for the Americas region in the field of cybersecurity. Two professionals as editors of a new standard of final documents of the meetings. The National University of La Plata won the 2016 WECI's Championships Award for their project E-Waste, Ecological Approach to the Digital Age. And finally, Argentina was the winner of the 2016 WSES Award for the project fostering the integration of Argentina academic, academia in the activities of the EITU. Uh, finally, and as I just mentioned during my speech, we want to renew the agreement with the ITU. We have already sent to the offices of the ITU the proposed uh, amendment for the continuity of this program during the next two years, taking advantage of the funding that we have allocated in the <laughs> ITU. Don't, don't cross the bridge before arriving to it. <laughs> Um, things may happen. <laughs> no, but, but, but uh, it is, uh, we have the commitment of the ministry that has authorized the continuity of this project with uh, some small amendments during the next 10 years uh, where we are going to uh, give priority to the universities that have been very actively in the, in the, in the last years. So the, the program uh, again, will continue. We expect to receive the comments from the ITU in order to prepare the final document and sign it as soon as possible so we can uh, re restart with the program in January of the next year. Thank you very much.
excellent use, uh, Mr. Huisi. Uh, it is actually what you are looking forward to hear from this uh, event. This is, uh, in fact, an exemplary model from actually a member, especially governments, he, which he, uh, encouraged actually academic members to become ITU academic member and to engage with all these activities. It, uh, it's actually just mentioned from project and hosting center of excellence and so on. And then I'm really glad to hear that uh, his reconfirmation and the commitment to continue this kind of a support extended to 20 plus uh, universities in Argentina. I wish other countries to follow your models, please. Thank you very much. Okay, next, uh, uh, another exemplary uh, can be uh, the shared from uh, Excellency, uh, this uh, Dr. Markazi uh, from this uh, Iran, who is the Deputy Minister. So I would like to invite uh, the doctor from the Iran to share your exemplary at uh, the practice with us. Doctor, please. Okay. Dear Dr. Kim, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much for providing this opportunity for me to have a short talk here. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Higher Excellencies from the government of Argentina and IUT authorities for putting together this very important and very interesting conference. Uh, let me start with the short statistics uh, about the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, Iran has more than 1.6 million square kilometers land with about 80 million population. 65% of them are under 35 years old. So it's a good demographic uh, from, for ICT as a market, as an emerging market and uh, en environment. We have 63,000 kilometers of fiber optic as backbone with a bandwidth of 10 terabits per second. So, uh, and also 50% of the total network traffic in Iran is local. That's because we have almost a good uh, level of uh, internal content, although it's, not, it's far from sufficient right now. Uh, in terms of network, 800 cities in Iran are already equipped with uh, 4G and LTE networks, and 900 are waiting to be upgraded to 4G. They are 3G right now. 27,000 villages uh, have access to broadband. You know, Iran is a vast country, so it's very challenging to have all the villages access to network, but it's happening actually there. Uh, 50 Seven percent of the population have already access to broadband, and the penetration rate of mobile is about 140 uh, percent. It's good to know that uh, more than 120,000 Persian applications are on local and international app stores right now. Uh, and despite the sanctions, there are many local services with millions of users in place right now including uh, photo and movie sharing, uh, drive hailing, uh, e-commerce, and uh, also things like IPTV app stores, just to name a few. Uh, despite such remarkable achievements, we are still concerned with the uh, lack of exposure of Iranian companies and universities to international competition and also limited access of those to international markets. So we want this to be uh, overcome in the future, hopefully. Uh, in terms of academia, more than six Iranian universities are ranked between 120 to 200 worldwide in the ICT-related disciplines. So we have a, almost good universities there. Uh, more than 250,000 graduates every year come into market. Probably they are looking for jobs, and they cannot find good ones, of course, uh, in ICT-related uh, disciplines. Uh, the number of uh, Iranian university which are member of IUT, ITU is uh, now one, and it, it will be increased to six by the end of year. 
Uh, we believe the, in the importance of universities in providing the fundamental knowledge and the skills in overcoming the challenges for implementation of new ideas into market. And also, we believe that IoT is a game changer, so it's uh, very much of interest to us. This is the policy in our country. Uh, in order to help universities and startups, knowledge-based knowledge -based startup companies to cope with such challenges, the, importantly, the challenge of accessing hardware, accessing flexible test beds, accessing uh, uh, research networks, we are implementing uh, an ICT park in Tehran. It would be uh, facilitated by flexible test beds. It would uh, serve to universities as well as uh, startup companies so that they can provide their own applications, their own services to the community. Uh, and uh, this, the peculiarity of this ICT park compared with other 50 parks which are already established in Iran is just the flexible test beds for IoT, so of IoT and cloud computing and things like that. Uh, furthermore, we have a plan uh, for an international ICT city in a free zone near Tehran that would be a place for collaboration of international companies with their local partners to make clusters in ICT-related disciplines. By ICT-related, I do not mean just uh, network or software. It could be pharmaceutical as long as they are driven by ICT uh, power and also logistics because we have a good airport in that area. It's a dedicated airport, airport which can serve to ICT companies, for example. And uh, we hope uh, that would, uh, the, the, the study is undergoing right now, and we hope that it will be triggered by next year, the starting the uh, next phase of the project. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that uh, our countries and uh, communities are in desperate need uh, for the underlying knowledge and the skills which brings in the power of future prediction, as I mentioned in the yesterday meeting. Future prediction is instrumental for all communities and countries. If they want to keep their position, they, don't, they want to shape their future, so they have to be uh, equipped with the power of predicting the future. And this is what ICT will, will bring about in the future and right now. Uh, so that would be uh, that would prevent the increasing digital gap and uh, eventually achieve, help us to achieve uh, our sustainable development goals. For the green future of the world, I think the role of academia and knowledge-based companies is not only profound, but vital. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Vice Minister. This is uh, uh, the leadership that uh, we are looking for, like Argentina and then Iran, who are actually supporting their kind of academicians who can be a pioneer for these uh, startups, for innovation ahead for the future. So before actually moving on to next session, uh, is there any very uh, urgent question, maybe one or two uh, questions addressed to the, the ministers? Vice Ministers and then Secretary from the Argentina and Iran, respectively. Because uh, Secretary just uh, may uh, leave uh, soon uh, later on. So if not, I'm just moving on. Then, yes, and, uh, yes, uh, there's uh, another academician from Nigeria. Can you kindly identify who you are so that, uh, that the participants can know who you are? Yes, please, if you can. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Engineer Charles Chike Asad, Nigeria, University of Nigeria, Sukan, the only university that has registered with ITU in Nigeria. Um, I have particular interest to the Argentina and even Iran experience was the 
government deliberately involving or encouraging the academia, and particularly to be part of ITU and others. How did you do it? Did you cost them, or did they require a request from you to support them? What were the strategies that you used? Because we are having difficulties in uh, getting the government to be giving us the necessary support on one hand, and even our own government is not so desperately interested like what two of you have presented. What strategies did you use to um, kind of get the universities involved or appetize them to be involved in that level? I don't know whether my question is very clear. I'm just trying to know the strategies you adopted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, the secretary from the Argentina can share your commitment, how it can happen. Thanks very much. Yeah, clearly, there was a decision from the high level of government to encourage universities to participate in this, uh, as, to join as members of the ITU. The first step was clearly to convince the ITU to allow universities to participate as member state with some uh, uh, requirements that uh, make uh, it possible for them to, to participate as members. Uh, then once uh, the, the approved uh, was, was obtained by, by the meeting of 2010, the BBP of 2010 in Guadalajara, then uh, the government invite, invited the different universities, starting by careers linked very closely with the ICT, to participate, and the government provided, and still pro uh, provided during the term of this project, funding for these universities to make them possible to, to participate in, in these projects and identifying projects in which both academia and the government were interested in. But, and, and, and as uh, it happens with other issues, we, we start by a few, but once the, the, the new spread all around the academic community, more and more universities became interested in, in participating in this process. And the problem that we may face in the near future is that perhaps we have more interested uh, uh, academic institutions and research institutions than the ones that we can reasonably uh, manage because of problems of, of funding. But uh, I think uh, it was, first of all, it was a decision from a high level of government to encourage this process to have, of course, as I mentioned, the cooperation and, uh, and the agreement of the ITU as a first step, something that has already been done. So for any country now, it's more easy to follow the path and, and then to uh, convince uh, the different levels of governments to allocate funds for, for this project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind explanation how it happened in Argentina, which can be a model for the other countries. To save the time, I can just move on. And then again, because of a lack of time, maybe we can just entertain with all these panels first. And then we can have some kind of uh, the, the interactive dialogues at the end of this, uh, all these uh, the panels being intervened, if you kindly agree. Okay, so with that note, maybe uh, let me start with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Ler from MIT uh, USA, uh, who will share on ICT for SDGs, especially the, the book that we launched yesterday. He is one of the key editors, to, together with actually Dr. Sarapat, who is present here. So let me invite uh, this uh, Dr. Ler for your inspiring uh, experience. Dr. Ler, please. Sorry, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be in Buenos Aires. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful experience for me as an academic to be at, this is the first one of these conferences I've been to, um, but I've been following the ITU's work for quite a number of years, and uh, it's wonderful to be here, I believe, very much in this work. I have some slides, or, oh, there, there we go. Okay, right, so, oops. So, um, if you were at the book launch yesterday, um, I'm not gonna be repeating my comments there. Um, the book actually exists, it's actually a real book. And um, you can download it. There's a, a link there. And if folks want these slides, I may, I'm happy to share them. Um, I'm trying, we're trying to get, get this panel so we can get as much discussion as possible. Sorry. Um, 
so I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, th the focus of the book is, is to try and understand uh, a broad coverage of what are the different ways in which ICTs uh, can affect and help support the, the realization of strategic development goals. And part of that is to have, uh, have reached a common understanding of, of like what are the things that ICTs do um, and, 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 and to take that snapshot after, at the 25 year anniversary of uh, the, um, uh, the, the ITU Development Bureau. And um, one of the key things is that you know, we're moving beyond focusing on just ICT infrastructure as we realize that the effects of ICTs are going to be global and affect all sectors, all nations, everyone, and there's no avoiding this. So even if you're in a sector or you're in a country that has very low development of ICTs, you will be impacted by what other countries do and what other companies do and what um, happens in the ICTs because they amplify, they accelerate, and they augment change. They you know, augment change, they can create new opportunities for markets, they can also create new sorts of problems. Um, the uh, evidence, the academic evidence that's accumulating um, is that there's a strong potential for positive economic and social effects. So, you know, it can, yes, it can add to economic growth. Yes, it can create jobs. Yes, it can make um, uh, all kinds of new health care services, uh, financial participation, uh, more efficient businesses, addressing new markets. It can do all of those things. But none of those things just come guaranteed and there are also harms and I think recognizing what those harms can be and how they can also be associated with um, things not necessarily caused by ICTs but enabled or, or accelerated or amplified because of ICTs and that's all sorts of digital divides. These will never end. They'll always be something we're trying to address and solve. So this is going to be a moving target. Um, we've got problems like e-waste. We have bigger problems with things like climate change um, and, and potentially lost uh, sovereignty. Um, what we need to do to realize the goods and mitigate the bad requires identifying all the complementary pillars. I spent a lot of my time worrying about what happens in the ICT infrastructures. And, and, and obviously we need things like mobile broadband, but we need a lot more than just mobile broadband. We need things like clouds, we need a, the new sorts of capabilities that come with things like Internet of Things and smart cities and all of that. Um, we need an in innovation friendly business and legal environment. A lot of that is going to be things that are, are related to policies that don't directly affect the ICT sector, although there will also be lots of ICT sector specific policy things that have to be changed and addressed. We need to have the skilled workers, and having the skilled workers is not a static thing. It's, you're going to need to basically have these people be able to adapt and change to the market needs. And we need, policy, we need public policies that are integrated across the whole spectrum from the, from the top down down and from the bottom up um, that will promote inclusive and sustainable the changes and will manage the adjustments because the adjustments to the new world are not going to be simple and easy. They're going to destroy um, old sorts of jobs and expertise and those workers need to be retrained if they're going to be able to participate in the benefits for the future. So this really is a global challenge and the ITU is one of the preeminent institutions to try and help coordinate that and that means getting all stakeholders both within and across nations, and obviously academia is one of the important stakeholders, especially as the time frame over which new knowledge needs to be integrated into practical decision making today, as we need to get the data to the researchers so the researchers can make sense of it and then can help inform the policy. And so, you know, the effort of trying to integrate um, uh, academics is incredibly important. And it needs to be very multidisciplinary within the academy. I'm an economist. I sit in a computer science and artificial intelligence lab. Part of what I'm trying to do is get engineers talking to lawyers, talking to politicians, and other economists and sociologists to try and understand how to design these technologies so that all the policies and the technologies can co-evolve. Um, oops. <laughs> this is my last slide. This is from a paper that um, uh, recently came out by um, some Microsoft researchers trying to trace the trends of what's happened in, in information technology. If you look at, in, in terms of the sharing of science, and so these guys scanned data on patents and all that, and there's lots of questions you might have about whether or not they did this the right way or not, but I think the essence of the picture is true. What you look at there in the green is you see that a, a highly concentration um, 100 years ago in terms of where the, 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 the scientific community was and who was sharing with whom. And what you see with the blue lines is that you've seen a lot more sharing around the world 
as the scientific community has become much larger, much more collaborative, much more integrative. But you also see that we'd like the whole world to be blue, and we're far from having seen that. And I think that this effort that we're starting here is part of trying to promote that. So with that, let me stop. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Rare. In fact, uh, let me just uh, announce one uh, the information. Uh, our discussion is actually webcasted. Just be mindful what you're also talking and then discussing in our session. Another actually uh, maybe uh, associated uh, the announcement is that this uh, the book, a uh, hard copy of this book is available at ITU bookshops and the minus two. So if uh, you are interested, you're welcome to have uh, the book. Okay, so uh, as I said, uh, in terms of Q&A, I will just invite at the end of this, all this panel's intervention. So uh, my, uh, the second uh, the panel will be uh, Mr. Cosentino from the Universidad Nacional de Belgrano from Argentina, who will share on attaining SDGs through innovation from the academia. Please, thank you very much. Okay. Well, uh, well, thank you. Thank you to all of the uh, staff here from ITU and the government, also Victor and the team of the city. Uh, well, what I will try to, to explain, I will go faster, so faster and your seatbelt. <laughs> we don't have too much time. But the objective of this presentation is try to, to, to set up the, the, the guidelines. What we understand is the way to achieve the SDGs Hello? Oh, oh, I can. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, uh, so what is this uh, definition of sustainable development? Traditionally, when we talk about development, we think about the evolution of something to something better. But it can be a group, we, we, we say, in three pillars, okay? These three pillars are the base of the sustainability. The base are pillars or sets as a family of elements that we have the envir environmental, we have the economical, and we have the social role of each of the sets. So what we have there is the intersection of these sets forming what we call the sustainable objective. We say that something is sustainable if meet the three of them. If we have each of them, you can see in the slide, you will have different things and different kind of development, but not sustainable development. So we have now what we call the first network. This is a system. The difference between a set and a system is that the e elements inside are related each other, okay? So we have a system of elements related each other, forming a sustainable development. But why do we need innovation, and why, why do we need uh, to innovate to have a sustainable development? Well, we, we need a sustainable development based on the idea on going, as Newton said, going where everybody went and see what anybody see. So this is a, a set of, pro of processes. It's not a spark in the middle of nothing. It's a process. It's a link of networks. It's a situation that brings us to a better uh, life uh, lifestyle. So how do university take an important or principal role here? Well, uh, as Athen Athens from classics in Greek or Florence from Renaissance 
or Paris in 19th century, or even now Silicon Valley, they had something in common. They had an environment, innova uh, an innovation environment set. I mean, they have places where people can go to think and talk each other, share ideas, research, uh, do agreements. So this innovation environment, we think, is the key for achieve the sustainable development goals. So why the university is the key? Because it's in the center of the research, the education, the agreements occurs. So that's why academia is very important, and this project of the ITU is very important. How, how's the power, the power of this network? Well, I, I define the power of the network as the number of connections that we can create. If we are three person, we, we can set a small polygon triangle. We have three connections. But if we, ho if we have four persons, we have six connections. So the power, the power of the increase of communication and sharing ideas, sharing innovation, increase in quadratic wave. See? It's not linear. That's why the power of the networking. That's why ways is very important. The crowdsourcing technologies. That's why uh, Kickstarter, as a crowdsourcing te uh, technique, uh, we have even the, the MIT has its own uh, collective intelligence uh, team. So the collective intelligence, the networking, today with Chesu uh, Lee, we were talking about this in, in a previous meeting, is so critical for innovate and for evol evolution. So what do we need? To innovate, we, we, we must fail as part of the process, and it must be learned in the university. We need to understand that failing is a step in the moving forward to the innovation. From south ends of startups in Silicon Valley, just uh, once or, or tenth succeed two years later. So we don't need to see a fail as a problem. We need to see the fail as an asset, as an experience. Uh, according to Churchill, success consists of going from failure to failu, failure without loss enthusiasm. And this is another thing important that we, have, we need to have in the in innovation. We need to have enthusiasm. We need, we need to have tolerance of failing. And we need to have curiosity. All of them must be encouraged in the university. University needs to Le teach to the uh, to the students on how to be a, a, a passion uh, uh, on the topic that they are studying. What bring this innovation? Bring the information age. Br transform the uh, episodic series to movies. We change it from a picture to a movie. We have connected services and products. We we went from corrective maintenance to predictive maintenance. We went through descriptive situations to prescriptive si situation. This is a key. This is a key that we have to keep in mind. We are in a connected society. And, and why is important this age that we are, we are living together? We move from the labor intensive through the capital intensive and arrives to the knowledge intensive. If you see the progress of the humanity, is exponential now. Why now and not before, 10 years before, or wh what is happening now, just to have a context? Uh, we have a combinatorial effects of multiple technologies in his maturity. We, we start to, to talk m maybe about data meaning 15 years ago, but with data meaning with machine learning can do today, cannot did it 15 years ago. So, and this combinatorial effects is um, leveraging, leveraging and amplifying our possibilities to explore new solutions and add value to our data. In this uh, chapter, what we have is IoT. And, and I will go just to the examples and finish. And what is IoT? The, the IoT, the IoT, I would like to, to do a, again a, a small definition, is the ability that we have to transform a data and wisdom, okay? And act according to this wisdom. It's not just an automatism that before was machine to machine where a water tank goes down 
and the pump start because receive a signal. Now, before to turn on the, the power, the pump, we ask, is there anybody in the house? No. Is the dishwasher working? No. Is the washing machine working? No. So don't pump, don't fill the tank, because probably you have a leak in your house, and you, can, you, you will get wet when you arrive. So this is the wisdom that Internet of Things brings to the traditional automatism or machine to machine. And we are working on two items reaching these sustainable development goals. And one of them is the smart irrigation, asking the same. Is it going to rain tomorrow? No. Is, going, is the, 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 the temperature uh, forecast being higher for today? No. So, well, don't rain. Don't, uh, don't irrigate. Same happened with, with the thermal medicine traceability. Today, we don't have a real traceability of vaccines in uh, regions, for example, in the north you know, of our country, where it's very hot or is a difficult access. So most need people need to have a, a kind of traceability to be sure that the vaccine that they are getting is well conserved and the effect of this vaccine will be as most as uh, good as possible. So just a, a, a conclusion. Uh, the networking, the power of networking is the key of innovation and the academia and its role through organizations, industry, and government is the enabler to reach what uh, we understand are the sustainable development goals. So sorry if I was <laughs> very fast, but I wanted to go all, all through all slides. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I cannot agree more that uh, innovations must and then networking is the key. I will come back uh, for the, any questions later on. So next panel will be Mr. Uh, Bastista from uh, the ACTEL who is the Secretary General and then uh, he will share the sustainable villages for uh, development initiatives. So Mr. Bastista, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. It's about lunch time now, so not to be in between you and lunch. I'll be very quick and very briefly. Thank you very much for the opportunity to exchange uh, this uh, uh, project and these ideas with uh, with all of you. Uh, my colleague from the University of Belgrado just easy up my 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 presentation because he summed up very very briefly and very well uh, what is the aim of this project. And uh, for the past days, uh, and I participated in a in a in the initiative at the beginning of this week, uh, where we were talking about uh, the problem to connect the unconnected. And this is uh, obviously uh, one of the, the most important goals that we need to achieve in terms of development, in terms of the work of the ITU on, on the D sector. But this project that I'm going to present now also focuses on another problem, which is what to do after connect people. And this is for us, ArcTel, uh, which I'll say what it is in a few moments, uh, the key element for the development. Because, I mean, we've been fighting all over these years to connect the unconnected, but somehow, sometimes we forget to empower them to use correctly uh, the, the access that we provide to them and the, the connectivity that we bring to them. And so this project, as you'll see, it's basically focus on three layers of, of, uh, of importance. The first one, of course, is to promote the access and the connectivity. The second one is to promote the digital inclusion uh, when we uh, enable them to have access to the internet. And the third layer and the most important one is the, to work with the local academia, to work with the local initiatives and to empower uh, their ideas and their, uh, uh, I, and their initiatives that can become either business, either solutions, and most of all, correctly use of the ICT. So briefly, uh, ArcTel, just for you to have an idea, is the, the, uh, the association of the regulators uh, from the Portuguese-speaking countries. We are nine in total. And uh, just for you to have a, a, a better idea, we are present in four of the regions of the ITU. Uh, this project in particular is being developed uh, with our partner from, uh, from Germany, uh, it's Fraunhofer, it's the biggest uh, uh, R&D association in Europe. Uh, 
it has more than 66 institutes and 24,000 uh, employees. And they also have uh, an office in Portugal, which is where we are working together with them. So as I told you, uh, this initiative has uh, three, three layers. So the first one is to promote the access to broadband internet, also the universalization of the use of ICT and digital inclusion. And uh, on the second layer, the idea is to create uh, a network of living labs, uh, uh, although this, uh, this, uh, this network of living labs we use only local brainware. So we'll work together with schools, with universities, because we're not only talking about uh, universities, we're talking about primary schools and elementary schools because that's where uh, the brain begins to, to flow and uh, that's where uh, the new uh, ideas can, can begin as well. And on the third layer we have the, the promotion of uh, data information exchange between all the different living labs and also uh, a tool to enable big data and analytics concepts that you will see in the next slide. So for you to have an idea again, ArcTelts are the, the, the country members uh, from Asia Pacific where we have East Timor to Brazil uh, in Latin America to Portugal in Europe and also uh, other six countries in Africa. As you can see, we cover pretty much uh, a, a huge part of the globe. How is the project uh, designed? So basically we have a, a, an infrastructure, uh, a, a network infrastructure which is very uh, low cost and, and very effective in terms of, of, uh, of uh, uh, work operability and also in terms of maintenance. And then based on, on that infrastructure and the access that we provide to the internet, we will then start to build and to work together with locals in order to develop uh, different projects in different areas of, of uh, or different sectors uh, of actuation. Uh, just to, for you to have an idea, so this is more or less how it works in network. It's, it's, in a, it's a, a mesh base. Uh, it can go up to 200 megabits per second with uh, less than 2 milliseconds uh, of latency. It can reach up to a 200 Kilometer, kilometers area, which is pretty uh, impressive for, for the kind of, of uh, infrastructure that you're using. And most of all, is self-managing and works uh, in license-free spectrum. It can also provide, uh, as, provide as a YLAN, a 3G, 4G, FM, radio, whatever you can, uh, of course, on that, you can use that, that network. So, as I told you, is just a plug and play system, low capex and low opex and high uh, ability and potential and this has been proof of concept already because it's already uh, being used not only in Europe but also in several countries in Africa. And now to the most important part. So based on the connectivity and the access that we provide to, to areas where there's no connectivity at all or there's uh, uh, low connectivity and access, we work together with the locals in order to develop uh, 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 potential ideas, in order to develop projects that can, be, that can have an impact on the real lives of the population. This is just a, a top of the art example. This was uh, developed also with, the, with the, uh, a foundation in Portugal. But what you see there is a very low cost microscope, which is printing on a 3D uh, printer um, that uses a smartphone to automatically detect uh, malaria parasites by using image processing techniques and smartphones. So in, in a blink of an eye, in a matter of seconds, you can have uh, an analysis of uh, uh, the malaria disease in place, uh, saving lives, uh, uh, adequating the, the treatment that you have to, to use and without waiting for several weeks until the result comes from a laboratory. So just for you to have an idea, all this set, including uh, a laptop, this uh, is uh, less than 2,000 euros uh, uh, of cost. Another one, uh, it's also uh, in, 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 in work now in Mozambique and South Africa, is the hydroponic farming. This is being developed with the local University of Universidad Montblanc and also the University of uh, um, Nelson Mandela in, in, in South Africa. And although we may look at this and think this is too fancy and to develop for, for a country like Mozambique, for instance, but it's not. This is a very low cost uh, uh, project using sensors and uh, uh, equating the use of the smartphones to the local knowledge of the populations. We do not have to use fancy uh, uh, applications. We use sim symbols. We use uh, uh, images that the, the, the farmers can easily identify and use it very easily, uh, enhancing a lot their, their capability to, to work on their, on their farms. Another area, uh, 
to related to environment, as, as you can see, we're trying to cover all the SDGs. Um, this is a, a, a simple system for turtle monitoring uh, in Saint Tomé. Saint Tomé is a, a, a very small country, an island uh, in, the, in the Atlantic. They have 160,000 inhabitants, but they have the luck to have five of, of the most important species of turtles. As you may know, this can be a very powerful tool to, to improve tourism, to improve income to the country. So we're working together with the government and local ONGs, uh, and also with the, the University uh, of Saint Tomé to build this application, to build this uh, monitoring system that will for sure empower the, the country in terms of tourism, in, in terms of incomes, and this uh, will have an impact on, on the daily lives of the, of the population. Just for you to, to, to have an idea, uh, in this particular case, in, in Saint Tomé, we're working together with the university uh, where we found three young guys that were work on ICT and the only thing they have are two computers, one PC and one laptop. And they can do marvelous, they can do magic with those two pieces of equipment. And we're not talking about top of the art uh, PCs or laptops, we're talking about old equipment uh, with a very low connection uh, to the internet. But the thing is, and the truth is, they nailed it. And they are working hard, they are doing all their best, and they are doing things that normally we will only think that we could see on the developing world, and it's not true. So with, with a little bit of investment, we are able to, to empower them, and who knows that the next big idea will come from one of those, uh, uh, those heads. Another example in Saint Tomé as well, we're gonna create a, a, a e-commerce portal in, in, in order to empower uh, the local production of uh, coffee and cocoa. Um, as you know, in the developer world, people are going nuts with all these biological products and natural products. So they have wonderful uh, productions of coffee and cacao, and so this will empower them uh, to, to sell uh, overseas without being uh, dependent of uh, uh, the big buyers and, and the, the big corporate that, that buy directly from, from them. Last but not least, uh, in terms of risk prevention, um, in Mozambique, uh, we're going to work together with the University, uh, University of uh, Universidade Montblanc from Mozambique and the local authorities in order to create a monitoring system for floods. Uh, in the region where we're going to implement the SV4D, there is a conjunction of two rivers uh, during the, the raining season. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, the, the number of uh, casualties is, is huge. Uh, they, lost, they, they lose their goods, they lose their families, their animals, everything. So basically what we're going to do is to develop a simple app with sensors along the river that will enable us to monitorize the level of the, of the waters and send a pre-warning uh, to the populations and to the authorities in order to save their lives and to serve their goods. Also this will enable us, and if you remember what I, I, I told you before, this will enable us to, to build predictions because we're going to collect all the data along the years that we're going to work there and this will enable us to, to, to have predictions and to, to, to avoid major crises in the future. So, some sum up or the overview, project areas use case, that's one of the, the, the main ideas of this, this project, bring connectivity to insufficiently connected villages and to extend reach of specific projects or service in remote areas, provide value service in that specific regions, sustainability, sorry, use efficient and low maintenance technology, as you, as you saw, um, deploy service over the network to generate revenue and cover the OPEX, and last but not least, which is the point that I believe it's most important for this panel, is to empower local ideas and coach them to become business. Values local entrepreneurship and local academy. This is uh, the sum up of, of the presentation. Just to conclude, also to announce that uh, together with ITU, we have reached an agreement uh, to, from uh, ITU to support us on those pr uh, particular projects in Mozambique and in Saint Tome. Uh, we're going to share uh, the investment on that, Arctel and, and ITU. Uh, the agreement will be signed, I think, just afterwards, the, the, the WTDC, although the announcement will be made uh, very shortly. And I want to thank ITU for the collaboration uh, to Arctel for the past years. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.
indeed is uh, one of also very inspiring example how this partnership can work even better for bigger kind of a world ahead in I uh, ICT ecosystem. Okay, so uh, next uh, uh, my panel is uh, the Mr. Diaz uh, from the University of the La Plata of Argentina who will share the case studies. Because of lack of the time, if you can kindly limit it to the two minutes maximum, then then uh, we can just go on to uh, some kind of a Q and A at the end of the session. Please, Mr. Diaz, please. Uh, well, I present the e-waste project of uh, University of La Plata that has a, a current agreement with the ITU for a pilot uh, plan for e-waste. Uh, the principal, uh, the e-waste uh, project started uh, 11 years ago at, uh, at our university, and the, and the main researchers are, and the main activities are re recycling and reusing computers for so social activities. We, we use uh, these computers in schools, rural schools, uh, welfare institutions, and, uh, and mostly as a, we are a university, the people that are engaged in this activity are most uh, students from different schools, from computer science schools, uh, engineering schools, and they, and they are engaged in this changing, how they can change uh, society by acting by themselves. Also, we have a repair uh, courses on repairing PCs, and on reusing this, so we have uh, in the we have several that uh, to document the activities, but uh, I think da, 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 da. we we have uh, the project has uh, reached more than one hundred eighty thousand uh, students from different institutions over four hundred uh, donations. And uh, there have been more than 800 uh, uh, students that pass, uh, that from different schools on the courses of assembly and repair in PCs. More than 200 uh, events uh, making awareness about this uh, problematic of e-waste. Over 400,000 uh, persons that have passed through these activities. And we have over 200 uh, uh, press releases. Um, we also have some uh, prizes uh, from the World Bank, uh, from the uh, from the nation, from the from the state, and also the uh, award last year for e-waste ecological approach to the digital age from the ITU. And we've been uh, pre-selected this year for the. UNESCO and Japan education for the, the sustainable development, we are running for it. The project that we are describing today is more the, the, the cooperation for, uh, make, uh, for fostering our pilot project to more recycling and more, uh, we have courses on repairing PCs and assembling PCs, but we are willing to um, introduce urban recyclers into this activity. So the, the, this project is a starting point to do this. We are in the, the project has, is, is in, in development by now. We are in the process of uh, buying the different uh, elements that were uh, designed for this project. Uh, we want to, the project has started uh, with different uh, professors uh, working on which kind of uh, items to recycle, to green, to work, and uh, how you can get uh, some economic benefit for the recycling, the urban recycles of this kind of uh, e-waste. So uh, we have to redesign the layout of, the, of our uh, uh, plant. Uh, and we have uh, we had to include these two spots. The ye yellow spots are for the green dim and plastic recycling. We have to reframe the other sectors, and also we have a, a hard disk sanitation laboratory. That uh, the two parts that are enhanced. It also as the process of uh, 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 how we manage all the stuff. 
the the yes these are the, the equipment that we are buying are these it's a, the grinding machine that will be used in order to teach uh, urban recycles. We have several machines for doing a better job and also the sanitizing disc for the software and hardware for sanitizing disc. Mr. Diaz, because of a lack of time, actually other groups are actually going to start actually 10 minutes before. So can you just uh, more or less uh, conclude in uh, maybe one minute, so if you can? Thanks. Well, these are all the stakeholders of this project. They are the, 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 the state of Buenos Aires, uh, chambers of recycling, enterprises, enterprises from recycling, enterprises for using their recycled products, and also uh, uh, some uh, provi uh, ISP providers. Uh, well, the, we are in the stage of, uh, we are receiving the material, so we are trying to end by this December, and we expect that this will be uh, uh, in place by March next year. So we'll be starting the activities next year. We are, the, with the current activities, the, the activities resulting from this project will start in uh, March next year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Indeed, the U.S. is one of the very emerging issues, and then this is one of the, our study group questions as well. So I'm really encouraging everyone can involve in the, in the related projects. So last, uh, the, the panel will be actually uh, Dr. Fischer Bett from the SCS. Uh, I saw from the Switzerland that she came all the way to join you to share about actually her engagement with us, especially around achieving sustainable developing uh, goals through ICT project. So, uh, Doctor and this Vesheve uh, from uh, Switzerland, welcome. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks. So um, I'm totally technical, and uh, I'm yeah, in ICT Institute at HSSO. Um, so I will present you briefly how we, we try to achieve sustainable development through ICT projects. So Swiss context is this. Uh, in fact, this is a federal law uh, to work on uh, sustainable development. And this means in HSSO um, directives, and this means in each school, in each engineering school, each university, this means uh, academic governments. And then this means also we have some rules about professors and so about students. So we try to work together. And for instance, in HSSO directive, this is to include HSSO in sustainable development approach. So this was written in 2014. Uh, also, HSSO should have positions such as responsible and citizen institution. So this is an, uh, a project. Uh, this is a transversal project managed by the HSSO. This was the, um, the end of project has a grant of six thousand CHF. So you can see it on the on the website. Uh, about school and uh, university, each domains, we have some development knowledge and skill technology process. So in real life, how is it going? In real life, we have one week just before the beginning of uh, uh, the academic year, we have one week just dedicated to sustainable development. So every professor, every student has to be here and has to share project or what they want to do, for instance. Um, on it, on professor side, we have a, a goal. So this is the director who gives us a goal to include sustainable development in our courses. We have to talk about sustainable development. Okay, so we have to choose. Maybe for me, I'm a woman, so it's easier for me to talk with a lot of men um, about this. Another thing is to work and to develop projects with students. And finally, about academic freedom. The thing I just point about this, 
we have the choice to work in certain area. For instance, we had a project with other professor and me, and the um, the customer was about yeah, the customer was about um, working on shale gas, and we we had a big project. This was something like eighty thousand euros so this was huge and we decided not to go with it this we, this is the, the academic freedom so some people agree with this the, the other no but that's it and finally we have to um, to share our experience in sustainable development with students and they have to be at the end of their uh, university they have to agree about sustainable development. But in case they already are okay with sustainable development. So, just question, is it sustainable development a constraint for us, for, um, for Europe? This could be, but no, it's a way to innovation. And real, for instance, this is a mast to refill buses. This is a project called Genilac, which use the water of Lehman Lake to cool down or to warm up uh, buildings. And so you will see here, for you, uh, you will have in UN nations, small. And then this is electronic. This is new, new way to electronic, plastronic. And that's it. So thanks for your attention. And the question. Thank you very much. Every country has a different kind of mod model to share, but uh, certainly all these panels reconfirmed the importance of uh, infrastructure application in ICT ecosystem. So I would like to really encourage innovative ideas ways forward. I really want to have some inter entertainment, one or two questions, but there's actually another group that uh, booked this room about 30 minutes ago. So I'm really sorry about this for interactive uh, the dialogue. So I can promise you, because I'm dealing with academic membership. So I will try to provide another network uh, platform like this in the near future. So welcome to, to join the, the next round of the networks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much.